Hello everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to a week last video blog and today I've got a little, a little list, a little top five list coming up on exercise myths and weight loss rumours that I keep hearing all the time. A little update on my progress and I'm going to chat about transgender issues when doing weightlifting. So it's my first main session uh, since Christmas, since the holiday. I've trained all the way through. And I know I made a video exactly about this, about hitting the new year hard, but I didn't. I didn't follow my own advice. I did compound stuff and cardio and I didn't really train. I had excuses. Hey, it happens. So this is actually kind of day one of 2018, even though it's the 10th of January or something. And I'm starting my, you know, my full strength routine actually starts today with a heavy glute session. But something I want to talk about is transgender, exercise and muscle training as a transgender woman. And also, I'm going to cover some myths a little later. But before we get into that, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, which is here somewhere. Hit that alarm bell, and you'll be kept up to date of all the goings on on my channel. And you can see my progress, and you can give feedback, and you know, ah, all the good stuff. Now, first of all, something that really frustrates me is the number of experts that I see giving advice on the internet. And people will blindly follow other people because they saw it on the internet. Don't do that. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to other experts. Do your own actual research into the science of how bodies work. Now, I promise I will always give the best advice I can. And I will try to form an opinion on the advice I give based on scientific evidence, studies, research, not just because I read it on a forum that's also selling a product and has its own agenda. But, you know, we don't, and, and you shouldn't really take my word for it either. I mean, I hope by following the advice I gave, you'll find that what I say is, you know, factual and works for people. It's good to be armed with basic fact-checking and know how to, you know, look for peer-reviewed studies, look for medical advice, don't just read it on a blog or a forum okay so first of all as a transgender woman I, my body developed with male attributes I have to work quite hard on getting my losing my obliques training my glutes a lot more than a, a cisgender a genetic female would have to I can't go crazy on the shoulders because I'll be far too broad and look hench so I have to cater my training routine to overemphasize the female attributes and reduce the, the naturally male attributes. And I'm going to do a whole show about this. But it's something I get asked a lot. And yes, it's true, you can feminize your body through training. And as I say, in my case, you've really got to work on rounding the bum, enhancing your thighs, keeping your shoulders tight, but not, you know, heavy, heavy, and really cut down on the midsection training. By all means, work on core. But don't train obliques. Don't tra so your sides, you want that to atrophy. You want your sides to come in to give you that hourglass shape. If you're looking for a training plan and you're transgender, I know quite a few of the people, hi, followers are transgender. Look for a plan that focuses on that shape, that double triangle. And like I say, I'm going to do a whole show on that. But I'm nearly at the gym, so I'm going to get sweaty. This is my glute session. And when I get back, I'm going to give you my... My top five myths, which I know they freak people out and people do backflips trying to stick to these crazy internet rules, which aren't true. Okay, sweat o'clock. The sun is right in my eyes. Right, I'm at the gym, gonna get sweaty. Back in a bit. Well, that was a sweaty one. 550 calories of bum exercise. Why is the hair in my eyes? I am so sweaty. Let's get some aircon on. Let's get the windows demisted. The gym is so busy and it's full of people. <laughs> so my current, my gym at the moment is like if you sign up at this time of year, you get like a free gym bag and a free t-shirt and a free towel and water bottle and stuff, like all the gym gear. And the gym is full of people with the free gym bottle and the free t-shirt and towel and stuff. <laughs> it's like noobs. As I said though, you know what? Start the gym. It's really good. It's quite a few new girls there today. They're really nice and they're all, you can tell when someone's new to the gym because they're like gingerly going around looking at the machines reading the little sign on the side to see what movements you have to do. Ah, uh, so hard joining the gym for the first time. You don't know what to do. You don't know what's going on. And you've got people who've been for a while are just getting onto their station and like, ah, grunting out some reps. Seriously though, if you're new to the gym, don't worry. And if you see somebody, if you're not sure what to do, ask people. Most people at the gym are really friendly. 
I hope all these people stay. I hope everybody... The sad part is, about half the people who join will have quit by the end of the month. That's really sad. Because going to the gym is hard, and if you haven't been before, it really shocks the system. You hate it. It's vile. It can take a couple of months before you start to enjoy it, and it becomes a thing. You start to enjoy the, the rush, and you feel... You can see the changes. It doesn't happen right away. All that happens right away is sweat, pain, and anxiety from... from People, you know, think of people that run staring at you. For the return part of the journey, I have a top five list of common weight loss myths. Weight loss and diet myths. Weight loss myths. Weight loss and exercise myths that I hear all the time. This is a top five list of things that internet experts say. Weight loss and exercise myths that you'll read on forums and websites everywhere most of which are absolute nonsense. So number five on my list is you have to stretch before training. No, you don't. That's nonsense. And in fact, actual science indicates that stretching before training can be bad for you. It can make it worse. Warm up gently, you know, do a little bit maybe, but um, stretching before training can injure you. And this comes from science. This is what doctors say not internet experts. So, um, yeah, there's a man on the bike here, I don't want to knock him over. Oh, and he's going really slowly in the middle of the road, oh my God. So yes, stretching, keep your stretching until the end of your exercise, not at the beginning. So there you go. These are gonna be quick fire, by the way. Number four in the list of weight loss and exercise myths, heavy exercise is good for the immune system. No, it's not. Well, okay, not necessarily. What people say is because you've got the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system is what helps move antibodies and, you know, helps you, um, helps cure you from disease and things. Exercise stimulates the lymphatic system. Ergo, exercise is good for your immune system, okay? Except, and here's the problem, heavy exercise, anxiety, overtraining, can cause stress. And guess what stress does? It reduces your immune system. So the reality is, while there are many benefits from exercise, becoming more resilient to disease and illness, not necessarily. Maybe in some cases, but there's just as much chance it can actually go the other way. And in fact, lots of the people I know who train a lot, they're ill all the time. And here's the thing, Gyms are air conditioned and full of sweat and bodily fluids. Most diseases are transferred really efficiently through moisture and you know exchanging of bodily fluids. While some people may have a benefit from uh, an enhanced immunity and lymphatic system, there are actually things which we can more than outweigh that. So sadly, that's not true. Number three in the list of Exercise and weight loss myths I keep hearing. Supplementation. All the pros say you've got to have shakes, you've got to drink protein shakes and supplements and vitamins and pills, 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 vitamins, shakes, chug, chuggy, chuggy, chug, chug, chug. Ah, um, seriously? Our bodies have evolved for millions of years to how to get all the nutrients and things we need for our body from a healthy diet. Now, yes, okay, there are exceptions to this. If, for example, you've had bariatric surgery and there is, you've got a, a deficiency in what you eat, then there may be an argument for supplementation. You need to have a little boost to what's going on. That's fine. But if you have a perfectly average, normal, healthy, balanced diet, which you eat regular meals through the day, you don't need supplements. You simply don't. Now look, now look. If you're a professional athlete, if you're competing in a bodybuilding show or whatever, then it may be physically very difficult to get the calories you need from regular food. I mean, you need a mountain of chickens and what have you. So then, if you're at that level of training, then yes, supplementation is going to be useful for you because you can pack in 3,000 calories in a whippy shake or whatever. But for your average person, healthy diet and exercise is enough. You do not need supplements, honest to God. Number two in my list of weight loss and exercise myths that I hear all the time. You must drink litres of water every day. 
No, you don't. Again, like with our nutrition, our bodies have evolved to get all the moisture and fluids we need from the food that we eat. Now, yes, staying hydrated is important. But unless your diet consists of sand and salt and you're, like, dry, just drinking normal amounts of fluid, uh, you know, a, a glass of water with your meals and maybe sip through the day, is enough. Two litres of water? Who can drink two litres of water a day? You be a sauce. So, so uh, that's just... Honestly, there is no medical science to back up these insane levels of hydration that, that experts tell you about. Just, just normal drinking and fluids is plenty. Finally, number one, the most common thing that I hear, and I heard it this morning as a comment on my weight loss thread, and this is always from women, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get bulky. Don't worry, you won't. Seriously? I, even when I was before, when I, my body was full of testosterone, it was hard to get bulky. Now that my body's full of estrogen, oh my goodness, it's so difficult to get bulky muscle mass. And again, one of the worst kept secrets in fitness and bodybuilding, most female bodybuilders take some assistance. They do things. It's very hard to be a natural female bodybuilder and get that she-hulk look. Bikini models, which people confuse, they do a lot of weightlifting. Guess what they don't do? They don't do much assisting, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, you've got to train like a machine to get bulk as a woman. You, what'll happen is you'll get toned and you'll burn calories very efficiently, but you will not bulk. That is a myth that I hear over and over again. In fact, the opposite is important. By using weights, by using resistance training, you can sculpt and tone and define your body. You will burn calories far more efficiently than somebody who just does cardio. So, the science and the fact of it is, lift heavy weights. Not even that heavy. Lift moderate weights, but tone, you know? Get the reps in. You won't get bulky unless you really go ham. So there you go. That is my top five list. That's the end of my video blog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this is useful to you guys. Don't forget to comment, like, hit the subscribe and alarm button. And I will see you guys in the very next video. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.